In this video, I'm going to be diagnosing and repairing a computer that randomly does not want to boot into Windows. Sometimes it boots into Windows, sometimes you get a splash screen with that specific error that I'll be showing you in just a moment. The first part of the video is going to be how do you make the problem happen again? Because this fix may not apply to everyone, so the first part of this video is going to help you, the viewer, out to know whether if the fix later on in this video video actually applies to you. And the second part of this video obviously is going to be how do you go about fixing this specific error message. So the footage you're about to see is me recording a monitor and it shows the error message. And I just want to get the overall behavior, how this computer behaves when you first turn it on and just figure out what exactly happens. So right now, what I'm going to do is just check out the behavior. When I go in and hit F1, it's going to bring me into the BIOS most likely. It's in the BIOS. I just want to exit the BIOS and see what happens. We'll do save settings and reset. So now it's booting into the operating system. So what do we know so far? We just kept the BIOS settings the way they were. We saved and we exited the BIOS. So nothing changed. So now the computer is fully booted into the Windows, which is the operating system. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the computer and then turn it back on. And I want to see if the problem replicates or not. I don't think the problem is going to replicate because the computer has power. I'm going to turn on the computer to see if the issue comes back or not. I don't think it's going to. See that? No error message. It goes straight to booting into the operating system as if the computer is fixed. But the problem is not fixed. And I'm going to show you why in a second. All right, now that the computer has fully booted into the operating system again, I'm going to shut it back down and I'm going to show you how to make the error message come back again. That way, you can try this at home, and if you can reproduce the same error message by going through the exact same steps, then you know the fix later on in this video actually applies to your situation. All right, so here we are, we're at the back of the computer. I'm gonna show you exactly how to reproduce this issue. All you do is you turn off the power supply switch, like so. That takes and shuts off all the power to the computer. And what we're gonna do next is press the power button. What that's going to do is it's going to drain the capacitors in the computer. Now once we do that, we're going to go ahead and switch the power supply back on and I'm going to bring you back to the computer monitor. Alright, here we are back at the computer monitor and I'm going to push the power button again to turn on the computer and this issue is most likely going to come back. And there it is. Now this is happening because we are causing the motherboard to lose power. That error message, that screen you're looking at is directly from the motherboard. That's telling you it can't retain its settings. And the reason it can't retain its settings is because it's losing power. There's a little watch battery on that motherboard. It's a CR2032 battery. And I'm going to show you this in a second, but that battery is most likely dead. All right, so fortunately for me, in the sake of this video, the battery looks to be in a spot on the motherboard that's easily accessible. And you can see that battery right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this battery out, replace it, and I'm going to do the first step I showed you in this video was reproduce the problem after I go ahead and save the initial config because I have a feeling to suspect that the issue is going to replicate after changing out the battery because not only did the computer lose power, but we did take the battery out of the motherboard. All right, so as we suspected, the error did come back because, like I stated before, not only did we take the battery out, the computer lost power when I unplugged the, the power cable from it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, do the same steps. I'm gonna hit F1. We're gonna get into the BIOS, and we are going to exit and save to boot up into the operating system. And what I'm going to do is 
repeat the steps to replicate the issue. And then hopefully from replacing this battery, we will not be presented with the same error because we have a brand new battery in the motherboard. Hence, the BIOS settings will be saved. All right, so here's the back of the computer. Here's the power supply. Flipping the power supply off. Going over here to the power button. Gonna hit the power button to drain the capacitors. Okay. And then I'm gonna flip the switch back on because we wanna see if the problem replicates. All right, so we're back at the computer screen. Let's see if this actually fixes the problem. Theoretically, it should boot automatically in the windows and not hit and get stuck on that motherboard BIOS splash screen. And there we go. It's booting into the operating system. Well, there you have it. That's a relatively easy fix considering the error message and the fact that it's somewhat of a big problem because you don't really want your computer to randomly not boot into the operating system. But another thing you might've noticed was the horrendous boot times, how long it took to boot into the operating system. That's because Windows 10 is installed on a hard disk drive. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm not only going to be reinstalling Windows 10 onto an NVMe drive, I'm also going to be reviewing the Fantex Eclipse P600A. So I'm gonna be taking all the internal components out of this system and putting them into that case. So make sure to like this video, comment below if you wanna add anything to this video. I'm definitely curious to hear your input. And also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that upcoming video. Thanks a lot and I will see you in the next video.